Hello everyone and welcome back. It's been a month into the league with several new skills introduced into the game and I bet you will be wondering which ones have been shaped into powerful builds so far. So here is a brief video about the current meta builds from each ascendancy that are dominating PoE Ninja in DPS ranking for softcore trade league. To make things fair, I will filter these against Mage Blood and original Sin builds to get a realistic data for a wider audience. Some of these builds might not even make it to the next league because they're too broken in GGG standards. So make sure to hit that like and subscribe button before we get to... Number 1. The Dead Eye is the most played ascendancy in 3.23. This is mostly the case in every league because there are several types of Dead Eyes from bows to wands and even caster builds. Mostly, it's used by 5-way carriers and magic finders. This time, we have the Sanctum Farming Icicle Mine builds followed by the Omni Tornado Shot builds. Icicle Mine builds have been dominating the Sanctum ever since Captain Lance introduced it in 3.20. These builds are capable of handling no-hit Sanctum runs to farm high-level items such as Original Sin, which is currently priced at 1.3 Mirror of Calandra, by the way. Without the Pro Genesis, both Icicle Mine and Omni Tornado Shot builds can be done in less than 100 Divines this leak. If you'd like me to make a build guide on this, let me know down in the comments below. Needless to say, there are a few Omni Venom Gyre builds as well. Gosh, Kobe would have made a build guide on these. Second in the rank is the Pathfinder, with most of its build being Chaos or Poison. But interestingly, there's a diversity in the list. The top ones being the Hexblast Miners, which is mostly used by Uber and Sanctum Farmers, followed by Viper Strike of the Mamba. If I remember correctly, G'day G'day here has a great build guide on this one. This is also quite an affordable build for most players in 3.23. This was something that grabbed my attention when it was first introduced. Interestingly, there's one guy playing a cast on crit ice spear build with Pathfinder. Looking at his gear, I could say this looks quite genuine with its defenses, considering he has good physical mitigation and spell suppression. But it's another Pathfinder build that doesn't use Master Distiller. Pathfinder is still the best one for Poison Blade Vortex builds. Most of the players here seem to enjoy the Veil version, and there are several guides for budget ones out there as well. Now you might notice that Scourge Arrow of Menace and Caustic Arrow of Poison don't show up in the DPS numbers. This is mainly due to the fact that they're mostly used for Magic Find builds which require very less gearing to function. Magic Find builds are significantly weaker than your average budget builds. Also, both these skills have low POB numbers in theory, though they perform quite more in practice. There are several other skills played as a Pathfinder such as Seismic Trap of the Swells, Reeve, Exsanguinate, Ethereal Knives, Ethereal Knives of Lingering, and Massacre, Spark of the Nova, and many more. This is also the class that is used for the Poison version of Herald of Thunder Auto Bombers. Third on the rank is the Ascendant. Now you might be expecting Aura Stackers and Ward Loop builds, but this time, we have Life Stacking Righteous Fire builds, led by some pretty cool budget reap builds, which you might want to take a look at. This one looks pretty simple using the Entropic Devastation Gloves. We don't see that many Impaler spell builds, but this one looks quite amazing with a set of mid-budget items. The Inquisitor is the fourth most played build in the game. There are several variations of cast on crit Inquisitors on the top, using Cyclone of Tumult and Ice Spear of Splitting. Most of the ones at the top are Energy Blade Ivory Tower builds, which brings me to Storm Brand of Indecision and Penance Brand of Dissipation. I have a full guide on my channel for this one. Using the same type of setup, you can compare it with these builds and improvise according to your budget. We also have the Fire Trap, Righteous Fire, Inquisitors along with Reap, Firestorm and the old Path of Mats Eye of Winter Miners. With Guardian, we have several minion builds such as Absolution and Summon Raging Spirit. But of course, PoE Ninja doesn't display the DPS numbers of SRS builds. Interestingly, we have an RF at the top level using Ivory Tower. It's interesting to see the good old lightning strike being played by most of the champions in 3.23. We also have some pure physical impale based spectral shield throw and splitting steel builds with good amounts of defense and damage. Another great champion build is the corrupting fever reap builds which are pure fist dot builds. I don't know if it's a set of memes or actual builds but here we have penance brand of dissipation necro builds at the top. Ghazi, could you please help me understand what's going on in here? Then we've got the Detonate Dead builds, which cannot show their actual DPS numbers because most of them are based on the Spectre or Corpse's life. I should also mention that there is a new meta minion build going on right now, 
and that is a blink arrow of bombarding clones. Though the numbers in PoE Ninja seem small, most of these are actual uber viable builds. You can check out some of these showcases, as they are quite amazing builds as well. There are several chieftain builds out there right now, apart from the regular R of Firetrap builds. My favorite one is the Volcanic Fissure of Snaking Bills. I did try one of these variations and it was a great build for casual T16 mapping and pausing. There's a very good build guide out there, made by Engineering Eternity for this, if you want to check it out. And as usual, we have Ice Trap Uber Bossing Bills at the top for the Occultist. This is also competing quite well with the Hexplast Miners and Cold BV Bills. Most of the POB DPS Bills can be found here and in the Assassin list. Let me know if you want me to make a guide for one of these. At the top of the Elementalist list, we have a Discharge Build, which is the typical Power Charge Stacker. You can check out Belton's videos for a good discharge build setup. It's good to see a crit based lightning conduit build. It is one of the most powerful skills in the game, to be honest, with the only downside of having to use the secondary skill to apply the shocks. You can check out my build guide on this from my channel. Then we have Ethereal Knives of Massacre, which is basically the new upgrade for the old EK Ignite build. The DPS numbers on these looks better, but I cannot say for certain with regard to their defenses though. Unless you're using the Progenesis setup, the Firetrap Elementalists are also great on a budget. It's one of my favorite league starters. With Trickster, there's a pretty powerful Big Ducks build going out there. And these are the Power Siphon slash Kinetic Bolt of Fragmentation builds. They won't show up here at the top because it uses a shenanigans with Nimus by staying on top of the Uber bosses while firing. It's quite laggy but pretty powerful to get nerfed in a future expansion. And then we have the typical Flicker Strike and Frostblade Tricksters. I would recommend checking out Behind Eyes Gaming Build Guides for FB Trickster. Hierophant builds are popular for uber bossing with Ice Spear Totems. But do you know what was really buffed this league? That was the old classic Siege Ballista Hierophant with the effect of quality on attack speed at this patch. They fire much faster than ever before. This is something I was planning on trying before the league even began. Then we have a mix of several other builds. Stormbrand of Indecision is good for a Hierophant. It has a good synergy with the Ascendancy and more totem builds include Reap, Arc of Oscillating and good old Shockwave totems. Most of the high-end Slayer builds are still Voidforge Flicker Strike builds. If you love this, I recommend you not to miss my Voidforge Flicker Strike build guide updated from the previous league. It's a build you should try at least once in a league time. Interestingly, there's a new Power Charge stacking build for Frostbling of Wintry Mist. This is the kind of stuff I would expect from GGG's next build of the week. And there are a couple more melee builds from Slayer. These include Bone Shatter of Complex Trauma and the Shockwave Cyclone build. The top builds in the Juggernaut list is the typical strength stacking Reeve. I have played this build and I can tell you that it is one of the purest melee builds to enjoy. The only downside of these builds are the fact that they get one shot to most spell hits due to the lack of spell suppression or spell block. However, they're pretty tanky against most attacks. Apart from this, we have the Bone Share of Complex Trauma Jugs. Assassin builds are typically the DPS builds. We have the winner here, highest DPS in 3.23. And this is the only fire trap of Blasting build. This is either made as a meme with overcap stuff, even if it actually works. Looking at the flask and defenses, I can confidently say that this is made to one-shot Uber Searing Exarch and Uber Eater of the Worlds. In the past several leagues, assassin builds were spammed with ice trap builds, but this time we have Penance Brand of Dissipation and Storm Brand of Indecision as well, with Hex Blast Miners and Blade Vortexes. Most of the Saboteur builds are Hex Blast Miners. This probably means that this build is best suited as the Saboteur. But here and there we have Reap Miners, Ice Trap and Fire Trap of Blasting. When it comes to Berserker, there's just so many builds that you can play with this. Apart from Flicker Strike, Ice Crash, Strength Stacking Reef, Bone Shatter, General Scry, Blade Flurry and Venom Gyre are the top played builds for the Berserker. <laughs> you might be wondering about the Cyclone build with 900 million DPS. It's basically a frenzy stacker which uses the Adorn Jewel. The resistances are not capped and the effective HP tells me that a level 2 witch is more tankier than this. But looking at the flasks, I could say for certain that this is another build made for farming Uber Exarch and Eater. This is the second in DPS rank in PoE Ninja. So Raider is also quite flexible when it comes to the diversity of builds. The most popular one used to be Flicker Strike, but now we have Lightning Arrow, Rain of Arrows, Spectral Shield Throw, Cyclone of Tumult, Frostblades, Kinetic Blast, Bleed Bows, and even Penance Brand of Dissipation. 
The score arrow build at the top is definitely a meme, or perhaps not. Finally, let's check out the best ascendancy in the game. I'm just kidding. Here you would be expecting bleed bows, like my build from the previous league. But after 13 overpowered builds, we have a new winner here. Lacerate of Hemorrhage is the top melee bleed build of 3.23. It's a proper build yet to be copied to be popularized by some famous Twitch streamer. So here is a build which comes quite decent and tanky for a melee build. So my overall summary is that this league has opened up to a diverse set of builds due to the ease of making currency whether you are magic finding, running sanctums, harvesting, highesting or even selling essences. So if you enjoyed this video, consider throwing a like and subbing to the channel. And thank you for watching.